the formidable robot. Words couldn't describe how messed up kids' shows can truly be. Whether it would be scenes that no child should honestly see, like the gruesome toenail scene from Spongebob, or an episode of Steven Universe where Steven mutates into a bunch of cats, something like that. To be frank, those could have been cases of childhood trauma, but what I remember managed to fuck with my brain. To be upright, I used to watch some of my DVDs and VHS tapes, even though we couldn't afford Netflix, Amazon Prime, or even the likes of that at the time, but what I wound up doing was buying a series of DVDs and tapes, if they remained. I always wanted to watch The Line Guard, which aired on Disney Junior, along with its pilot movie being aired on Disney Channel. It's a 2016 TV show based spin-off to the classic Disney film series we loved in the 90s and 2000s called, The Lion King, which came out in 1994, and its sequel, The Lion King 2, Simber's Pride, came out in 1998. Hell, have you ever heard of the 1995 Timon and Pumbaa TV series? Boy, those were the shit back in the day. Well, there's also The Lion King 1 and a half, or The Lion King 3, which came out in 2004, and it's about Timon and Pumbaa going into crazy antics behind the first movie. Okay, let's get on with the story. My older sister and I decided to go to a local rental shop to buy a DVD of The Lion Guard. Then, I finally noticed one. To be specific, it's one of those DVDs of shows that featured four or five random episodes. I picked up the Line Guard DVD, and it was entitled, Be Safe in the Pride Lens. The cover was nothing special. It was just an almost low-quality screen cap of the final scene from the season 1 opening, where it featured the gang standing over the rocks while the clouds roared. What a lazy DVD cover. And it listed random four aired episodes, including one that had never been aired. The original episodes were, Foley's New Family, Paintings and Predictions, Can't Wait to Be Queen, and, Beware the Zinli. This final unaired episode included in the DVD was called, Foley's Inferno. I thought that episode title looked innocent enough, but hey, I believed the word Inferno was a kid-friendly and unique term for hell. I gave the DVD to my sister and she paid for it. Then we headed home and it was my opportunity to watch the DVD alone by putting the disc into my PlayStation 4. I took out some pizza and soda my mother ordered us so I could sit back and watch the show. The four aired episodes were honestly great, but the fifth and final episode caused me to lose my faith in life itself and will scar me with distressing nightmares. The final unaired episode opened up with the regular intro, which showed us the cast of the Line Guard group with the typical African music. Once it cut to the show's logo with Mufasa's deep voice saying the name out loud, it then showed the title card below the logo. It read, Foley's Inferno! Followed by Kyan's voice saying the episode's name out loud. After the intro and title card, it cut to the fields of the Pride Lens, with the line guard talking about what they were going to do on this fine day, which is nothing special. Then, Banga started to talk about a unique forest that no animal had ever been to. Kyan wound up asking, Are you sure about that, Bonga? I bet that forest is too dangerous to go in if curious? Oh, come on! It'll be fun in there, you guys! Nanga replied before he takes the gang to where he had been talking about. The forest Nanga talked about looked rather displeasing. It looked like something that didn't seem to belong in a place like Africa. The trees looked crooked, dead and grey, but what's more displeasing is that the forest was filled with a large dark red fog. Foley looked very anxious and began telling Nanga saying, Kyan is right Bonga, we should not go in there because it is dangerous. Before Banga could say anything, Simba appears and tells the group that the forest is actually dangerous to go in, just like what Kyan and Foley said. Any animal that goes into that forest never gets out of there, Simba said. If you kids go in there, you'll be forever lost. And even worse, perish. The entire line guard gasped at the words forever lost and perish. They, along with Simba, walked away from the forest. Foley was still anxious, wishing that she wouldn't go into that forest. Nanga then called the uneasy cheetah a quote, scaredy cat, and he believed that Simba made that up to scare them. Are you serious, Bonga? Foley yelled. The king is not making that up! 
If we go in there, we'll be lost for good, and then we'll die! Oh, such a smart King Cheetah! Bongo replied. You better come with me if you dare! No, we're not going into that forest, and that's final! Foley snarled. Well, catch me if you can! Bongo yelled as he ran to the forbidden forest. Bongo, no! Foley screamed frantically as she chased Bongo. You're going to get us lost and killed! Kai noticed the cheetah and honey badger running into the forest and shouted. Foley, Bongo, no! But it was too late for them. Well, there goes two of our Lion Guard members. Ono uttered before he flew away and began to find them. The Egret used his bird's eye view to find the two lost recruits in the haunted forest but turns out it wasn't successful. He just saw nothing but the crooked and unpleasant trees and strong crimson fog. It... It's... Too late! Ono said sadly. Did they just... Disappear? Bashi questioned. Yes! Completely! Ono moaned. How is this possible? Kain asked. I have no idea, Ono answered. But don't ever think of going in there. We all get completely lost and die if we try to save them. Both Kain and Beshi agreed with Ono's advice as the three walked away, not even thinking of a solution to save the two that were stranded in the dreadful forest. It transitioned to Foley and Bunga now inside the forest, with the place looking very dark along with a crimson fog. Now, look what you made us do, Bunga! Foley growled, enraged. We're finally stuck here forever because of you! Now, our way out had suddenly disappeared! Nothing but an endless sea of trees! And it was very, very dark and foggy in here! Bunga seemed rather upset because of Foley's yelling. He said in pure guilt and sorrow. I guess you're right, Foley. The forest is indeed very haunted. I'm very sorry, Foley. We should not be going in here. Foley, very uncharacteristic of her, immediately said in a calm and re manner. Well, that's not good enough. Now I have to find an exit somewhere. To be fair, no animal shouldn't be here. The King Cheetah then ran fast to find an exit, atypically neglecting the poor honey badger who was guilty of entering the forest with Foley. Foley, you can't leave me! Bunga sobbed. I clearly had to find an exit to... To which, no reply. Bunga began to cry softly, because Foley left him to rot in that inescapable forest forever. It then transitioned to Foley, who was frantically running for an exit but to no avail. Impossible! There's gotta be a way out! She cried. The music in this scene, however, was different. It was something that was never heard on a show like this before, especially since the Lion Guard and even the Lion King movies intended to have African and jungle-like music. To be sincere, it was kind of like the dramatic music you would hear in Ren and Stimpy and Spongebob. No! 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 Foley sobbed as she finally stopped running. Oh, it's so dark in here! How would I ever escape this horrible place? The fast cheetah was even more upset with the idea of abandoning Bang before his mistakes she refused to forgive. Oh, Bonda! She cried softly. I... I'm very sorry that I have to leave you and never forgive you. We all make mistakes! She kept sobbing and crying for a moment until a strange loud noise was emitted from the distance. It sounded like an inhuman distressed voice moaning. It wasn't cartoony at all, but it sounded like something was in great pain and on the verge of tears. Uh, what was that? Foley moaned. That didn't sound like Bonda. The curious cheetah walked around the forest to investigate what was making the noise. Then the noise stopped, becoming nothing but haunting ambient music, something that you'll hear in an indie horror game. Gah! Foley said, stunned. I swear I have already lost Bunga, but now I'm finally alone! Too bad that Kai and Beshi and Ono won't save us in this nightmare of a forest! Then the noise returned, but this time, it sounded like the thing was screaming. Foley noticed that the source of the noise was chasing her down, and she began to run away fast around the creepy liminal forest. She encountered many disturbing things that didn't fit in a Disney Junior show at all. 
the fast feline wound up encountering three unusual creatures I tried hard to recall. Ugh, those monsters I just saw in that episode gave me huge chills. I would rather go into detail about these horrible things than not. The first creature was a large black and crimson red wolf, but with teeth that were like a saber-toothed tiger. It had menacing yellow eyes with small black pupils. Its jaw in that case seemed to extend crookedly where it would entirely devour its prey. It also let out a gut-twisting moan, like that of a human, except diabolical and deep. The second creature was a giant featherless brown bird, almost like that of a vulture. Its bill was sharp as a kitchen knife that would stab its prey before devouring. It had completely huge black eyes and its wings are like that of a pterodactyl. It also made an unholy alien-like screeching sound. The third creature was the most threatening to describe. It was a ginormous dark black and blue hunchback chimpanzee with extended arms. It had a huge mouth that would open wide and extend with sharp crooked teeth. Its eyes were completely crimson red with no pupils. The music at this point, if you could call it that, was a lot tenser and more threatening than ever. Foley kept running away from the monsters as fast as she could, until she began to pass out. The poor cheetah was tired out from all that running and finally away from those baleful creatures. Escape! Foley moaned. I need... to escape! Kain, Beshi, Ono, Bunga, wherever you guys are, help me out of there! Please! This... had to be a... bad dream! Then she finally rests. It transitioned to an hour later with Foley just lying there sleeping. The lonely cheetah woke up and realized that she was hungry. She roamed around the endless haunted forest to find something remotely edible, but to no avail. At least no more monsters were preying on her at this time. After a failed search, Foley wound up going unhinged and began saying, No food! No water! No escape! I... I can't take it anymore! How is this possible staying in here?! She began running around fast in the endless forest, screaming about her entire ordeal. This is pure perdition! I have no idea where I was going anymore! She kept yelling. Where's the exit? I had enough of this turmoil! Just let me go back to the Pride Lands! Foley then tripped over a rock, letting out a loud yelp, and landed on impact. She tried to get up, but to no avail. Then she noticed she was grabbed by her legs by something. It was that chimpanzee abomination again. The fearful cheetah shrieked in terror as she looked at the monster she was being grabbed by. Let me go, you freak! Foley shouted. I don't even know where you are taking me! I bet you are here to take me back to the Pride Lands! Well, that's not what the mutant chimp was offering at all. Foley was not ready for a place where her agonizing demise should begin. The creature that was grabbing the helpless cheetah approached a hole of fire, along with the wolf creature, bird creature, and a lot more hellish abominations I didn't even bother examining. The way they moaned and growled was enough to intimidate the viewing demographic, along with the tense horror ambience playing in the background. No! Please! I can't die! Foley kept crying. You better let me go and take me back this instant! I'm only a young cheetah who doesn't deserve to perish in a fire! The chimp monster then finally talked in a calm, but low-pitched fiendish voice. You shouldn't have come in here. This however wound up with the worst and happy ending of all time. The monster then dropped the cheetah into the hole of fire, which finally started her burning demise. Foley began screaming in intense anguish off-screen as it showed a shot of the crooked trees, followed by smoke and the flaming glow coming from the bottom of the screen. Her agonizing pain-filled screams were just literal, but it even got worse as the show faded to black. Once Foley's horrific screams died off, it finally showed the ending credits. There were a few oddities I could point out. The background behind the text was pitch black, and instead of the nostalgic upbeat credits theme, here comes the line guard, it was the same freaky ambient sound from before. Then it finally went back to the menu. I was fucked in the head because of that episode of such a show for younger children, despite it being an aired.
I'm sincere that the publisher made a huge mistake of putting that abomination onto a five-episode DVD, thinking that it was a normal episode. And if I was seriously honest, why was this episode planned for such a show made for Disney Jr., a channel made for babies and younger kids alike? Now I had to show the damn thing to my mother and older sister. I then took them to my bedroom and replayed the freaky shit for them. After I replayed the episode with my mother and sister, they were stunned but pissed at the same time, as I ejected the disc from my PS4 and put it back in its case. My mother hid the DVD away somewhere. She along with my sister can't recall the contents of that last episode on that disc. I even told them that it wasn't an aired episode being mistakenly put onto the disc. I don't know why an aired episodes of Innocent Kids shows had to be this fucked up, despite one or more of the characters dying in ruthless and genuine ways imaginable. Every godforsaken night, I have been having horrific nightmares, like when I got lost and perished in that haunted forest as my mother, sister and I went on a trip to Africa. Some people believe that the forest in Africa never existed as I told them the story. I honestly believe that the forest is just a Mandela effect, or myth. If you managed to come across this inerred freaky episode of The Line Guard, let me know the backstory of it.